hi guys so this is one of the first videos i am uploading as a part of my lead code solutions so today we are going through a problem by name Tusum. so it's an easy level problem so every time you try to solve a problem just make sure that you go through the description and the example properly and you understand it every understand every bit of it so let's go through the description so given an array of integers return indices of two numbers such that they add up to a specific target you may assume that each input would have exactly one solution and you may not use the same element twice so basically you, are give, you have been given an array 2 7 11 15 and you have to find two such numbers whose sum will be equal to the target and you have to make sure that you not you won't use the same element twice for example in this our target is 9 and if you add the first two elements 7 plus 2 which is equal to 9 so we got a solution and just make sure that you are returning the indices and not the numbers actually this problem can be solved in multiple ways so i'll be solving in two ways the first one is a brute force method which is not that efficient but easy to code easy to understand as well and uh, the second one is a bit more efficient way method so let's see what exactly the brute force method is in the brute force method you pick every element in an array and add it with every other element ahead of the element picked basically you if you pick for the first case you pick 2 and you add that with 7 11 and 15 then you pick 7 and you add it with 11 and 15 and you pick 11 and you add it with 15 and every time you add you check if this sum is equal to the target if yes we have a solution if no we pick the next element and add that element with all the elements ahead of it so let's go through our logic via example so example given to us is 2 7 11 15 and target is 9 so our first loop will go from 0 to size minus 1 i starts from 0 which picks the first element which is 2 so in this case right we don't start j as 0 that is because of the two reasons let's say i is 0 and we start j as 0 in that case we are adding 2 with 2 so this is one of the conditions what we are not allowed to do that we can't use the same element twice and when i is equal to 1 in the next iteration and j is equal to 0 so we will be adding 7 plus 2 so this will be repeated right because when you when i is 0 and j is 1 we would have already done 2 plus 7 so instead of repeating such cases we need to start j from i plus 1 so that's the reason i have written here the j loop starts from i plus 1 until um, until it's less than size so basically you pick 2 you add it with 7 11 and 15 and so on then you pick 7 you add it with all the elements ahead of it 11 and 15 and then you pick 11 you add it with 15 so in the worst case scenario you will be going through the array twice and let's say size of the array is n in that case time complexity becomes n square so let's write code for this so if you see the return expected from this function is a vector so let's take a return which is a vector so we need for loops two for loops in i is equal to zero a less than size size minus one because j will be starting one element ahead of it and then i plus plus and we take one more loop and j starts with i plus 1 picking the next element ahead of it less than size and then j plus plus right okay so every time you pick two elements you have to add and see if those are equal to target So if we find a sum, then we just add the indices to our vector. Basically, you push back i and second indices, which is j, and basically you return. Okay. So when once we finish through all the loops, both the loops, and if we don't have a solution, then we have to return an empty vector. So once you write the code before submitting or before telling the interviewer that you are done 
writing the code just make sure you browse through the code once and try to find all the minor mistakes everybody does mistakes so it's okay to do mistakes so let me just uh, go through my code first it's a very easy problem okay let's uh, try to run Okay, so we don't have the sites. Okay, let's rerun it. Okay, it looks like it passed for the basic case. So output expected is 0, 1, and we are getting the output 0, 1. Let's submit and see if it passes all the other test cases. Looks like it passed all the other cases. But if you see, the runtime is 516 milliseconds, which seems to be a little higher. And it uses some MBF memory as well. So as a second, next we'll be seeing how to solve this problem in a much faster way, much efficient way. Hi guys, so continue from the last session. Today we'll be solving this problem in a much efficient method. So here we'll be making use of concept called as maps where we store the number and in its index okay so the logic goes something like this so pick every element in an array calculate the difference so difference is nothing but the difference between target and the picked element okay so then we go ahead and check for two conditions so if if, if the map contains this difference value and if the index of this difference value is not equal to the index of the picked element so if we satisfy these two conditions then we have our solution if not, then we go ahead and store the element and its and its index in the map for the further cases. And then we continue by picking the next element and repeating the same. Okay, uh, let's go through the logic so that you'll have a much better understanding. So given an array 2, 7, 11, 15 and target is 9. So initially our map is empty. Right. Okay, then we pick, so we run a loop from i is equal to 0 to size minus 1. When i is 0, so first th thing we need to find is the difference. So difference between 9 minus 2. 2 is nothing but the number of the index 0. So the difference is 7. So as I said, we need to find two conditions. So if this element 7 is present in map, so in this case it is not. So we just go ahead and come out of the condition. Then we need to store the elements and its index in the map. So in this case, we'll be storing 2 with its index 0 in the map okay next we go to the next iteration of the map of the uh, next iteration of the for loop where i is equal to 1 so when i is equal to 1 our element is picked element is 7 right so the difference what we need to find is 9 minus 7 which is 2 so as we know we have already stored 2 in our map so we know that map has 2 so the second condition what we need to check is index of 2 which is 0 is not equal to index of the picked element which is 1 this condition is to satisfy the condition what they have given in the problem that we may not use the same element twice so in this case both of the conditions have been satisfied and we have a solution 0 comma 1 right so in this case in this logic we go through the array just once in the worst case and that's the reason the time complex is 0 of o of n so when compared to the brute force method where the time complexity was o of n square and here the time complexity is o of 1 so this is definitely a much efficient solution let's go ahead and code so as you know first the function returns expects a return vector let's take an variable size to store the size of the input vector we need element called as difference then we need a map so map will contain two integers that's an element and its index let's name it as gm for now okay so we start a loop in i is equal to 0 i less than equal to size i plus plus 
So first we need to find the difference. Different is nothing but difference between the target and minus the picked element in this case of i. So then we need to find and then need to check for two conditions if the different is difference is there in the map. Right. And we need to also check if the index of the difference is not equal to the index of the picked element. If these two conditions are solved, resolved, then we have a solution. We'll just to push back of i, then also push back the index of the difference. Then we return. So if our conditions are not satisfied, then we need to store the element with its index in the map after iterating throughout the loop if we not find a solution even then return the empty vector so as i said after writing the solution just go through your code and try to find the minor mistakes everybody does mistakes so okay size take a map okay size find the difference and try to find if difference is present in the map and if it is then we also check if the index of that particular difference is not equal to the index of the picked element if both the conditions are satisfied then we go ahead and store the result in our return vector okay let's try to run the code okay again a small mistake okay Let's wait for a second. Okay. So expected was one comma zero comma one and our output is zero comma one or one comma zero. It's the same. Let's try to submit and see if it passes for all the cases. Looks like it did. So if you see here the runtime is eight milliseconds when compared to the previous one where our runtime was hundred and five hundred and twelve milliseconds. It uses a bit of more memory because we are using a map. But in terms of time complexity, it's a much faster solution. So yeah, this, these are the two ways of solving a basic easy problem to some. So let me know if you have any queries or if you have any inputs, how to make it more efficient. Please leave your comments and share knowledge and keep learning every day. Thank you.